Now for Global Grid, and we're going to take a closer look at the situation here in France. The French president continuing a series of national debates, admitting there are issues of inequality in the outskirts of some of the cities. The debates are a response to the ongoing yellow vest anti-government protests. Another thing to come out of those demonstrations, new laws currently being debated in Parliament. To tell us more about them, we're joined on set by Armin Georgian from our International Affairs Desk. Armin, Parliament debating quite controversial laws. Yeah, today there's, uh, there's, uh, Parliament is going to be considering uh, this law that aims to uh, essentially stop the most violent people who've taken part in these uh, yellow vest protests. And it's controversial uh, because it basically gives power, uh, the, the power that judges currently have, to prefects, which is uh, local state security officials. Um, so under this law, prefects would be allowed to impose a ban uh, on people deemed to be a threat to public safety. And critics here are saying, well, that's clearly an attack on the rule of law because it's judges who should be able to continue to decide uh, such things rather than uh, than prefects. Um, there are other aspects of the law which are controversial, which we should watch out for today uh, when this session of Parliament convenes, Eve, uh, particularly this question of should you be considered a criminal if you cover your face during a street demonstration? That could be with a scarf or a helmet or a mask. And again, the idea there is to uh, stop uh, the violent uh, members of, of these protests from being able to hide behind masks or whatever. The problem is there are other people who might well want to protect myself, themselves if you see scenes like this. Uh, what if there's tear gas or something and you simply put a scarf around your face um, to stop yourself from getting hurt, but you're not actually one of the violent people yourself, uh, you could in theory be fined. At least that was in the latest version of the law. I gather that aspect is actually going to be tweaked a bit today. Uh, but in any case, this has become a very controversial move. And I, some members of the majority party, the Republic on the Move party, are set to abstain or perhaps even vote against this today. Uh, meanwhile, Armin, another thing that was brought in to maybe address those anti-government protests are these national debates which are ongoing. Yeah, that's right. So Emmanuel Macron uh, has already uh, gone into rural areas to uh, discuss essentially what are the concerns of France's uh, rural uh, citizens. Uh, this, I gather, is from uh, yesterday's debate, which was a slightly different edition. Uh, this is, yeah, I'm, I'm, this has been confirmed to me. This is uh, in uh, Evry, uh, uh, Courcouronne, uh, Courcouronne, sorry, which is about 10 kilometers south of Paris. So this was a session uh, really about urban regeneration. So he's discussed rural politics. Now it's time to discuss urban uh, renewal. And he did that with 150 locally affected official, uh, uh, elected officials. Um, there was some disquiet there uh, about a plan which he had originally intended uh, to present to these rural uh, collective uh, organizations, but actually had been shelved. It was known as the Borloo plan after a former French government minister. And some of the uh, people present in this debate said, we really regret that this Borloo plan was shelved because that was a genuine exercise in participatory democracy and now it's been put on the back burner. So perhaps showing that although he wants to be a listening president, there's a limit to how far he's actually willing to go. And of course, that's what critics have been saying all along in this so-called national debate, which uh, actually ends on March the 15th, so uh, a little bit before the European elections in May. Indeed, and already a lot of people, Armin, are looking at those European elections and wondering whether or not these debates and even this Yellow Vest movement will be a help or a hindrance. Yeah, well, absolutely. I mean, and if you look at the opinion polls, uh, they kind of show that uh, a majority of French people don't believe that these debates so far have changed the approach of Emmanuel Macron, the way he interacts uh, with French citizens and voters. Uh, and uh, clearly, um, if you look at those polls, you see a massive gap between the popularity of the Yellow Vest movement and Emmanuel Macron's popularity. Just back in December, he was on 24% approval ratings, while the Yellow Vests were around 70%. That has gone, that has shifted a little bit. Yellow Vest slightly less popular now, according to polls. But uh, the the thing about the European elections is you're seeing uh, that this yellow vest movement is so 
wide ranging, they want so many different things that it's very hard for them to come together as a one force in the European elections. That's of course because many of them don't want to have anything to do with traditional politics, with party lists and elections and things like that. But those who do are finding that this is a very divisive campaign. There are now three distinct yellow vest lists in this European election eve. So you've got the Citizens Initiative rally, uh, which has already suffered a number of defections. That should not be confused uh, with uh, the uh, rally of yellow vest citizens. So that's actually two, uh, two separate uh, lists. And there's a third one, which is actually intended to be apolitical and not trade union based. Um, so it's they're kind of discovering for those who do want to enter politics in this slightly more traditional way that it's extremely difficult to come together on a on an actual program. Okay, well I guess only time will tell, Armin. Thanks indeed for that, Armin George, in there from our international affairs desk. Time now for us to.